This is a part two to my video, Children's Drawings with Disturbing Backstories. If you haven't seen the first one, the link is in the description. The drawings you're about to see were all done by kids. Whether they appear innocent or not on the surface, the stories behind them are what really make them unsettling. This ordinary looking drawing made by a six-year-old doesn't appear to have anything that would be any kind of cause for alarm. On the surface, it just looks like a young kid playing in the front of their house. There's tons of smaller details in the drawing, such as his dad raking the leaves, his mom at the window, and a few cars in the street passing by. It all seems like an innocent drawing, but there's a bit of an unsettling backstory behind this. The six-year-old boy who drew this is a very well-behaved and quiet kid according to his parents. I'll refer to him as Jake. He stays to himself most of the time, and his teachers describe him as a well-behaved child, just very, very quiet. He has a passion for drawing, and constantly draws pictures and writes little story picture books. Jake has one sibling who's currently two years old, who he has included in multiple pictures too. His mother says most of Jake's free time he spends either watching Cartoon Network or YouTube videos or drawing. There was no cause for alarm when his parents found this first picture. However, there was when they found a more recent picture that Jake had drawn. Here's another picture of Jake in front of the house, but maybe you've already spotted it. In this picture, there is an identical car in the street with the same person sitting inside. This time, it seems Jake is looking at the car in this picture waving. Jake's parents are not seen in this one, interestingly. But his parents were intrigued now about the car and who the person inside of it was supposed to be. So they questioned him. Jake explained that it was a car he'd always see out front and that the man sitting inside of it would always smile and wave whenever he saw him. So the next day, Jake's parents took him outside to point out the car, but he said the car wasn't there. In fact, it wasn't for the next few days, until finally, one day while Jake was playing outside, he came running inside to his parents to say he saw the car again and the man was inside again. Jake's parents rushed outside to the front to look and saw the car speeding away past the house down the block. It was an old silver Buick, and Jake confirmed that was the car. It was none of the neighbor's cars, that much was known. Jake's parents went to all the neighbors and asked if they'd seen that car sitting in the street at all, to which all of them replied they had not, but that they'd keep a lookout. For a few days, Jake wasn't allowed to play outside unless his parents were there with him. But after the car didn't seem to return, Jake was once again allowed to play freely out front. But one day, he came inside and said that the man in the car was back and was trying to get him into his car. Of course, Jake's father ran outside as fast as he could, hoping to get to the car in time, but he saw it already down the block by the time he was outside. He tried chasing the car down in his car, but by the time he even got into his car, there was no way of tracking where the car went. Once again, Jake wasn't allowed outside of the house. The car wasn't seen outside at all for almost that entire week, until one night, unexpectedly, Jake's father was about to take the garbage out when he noticed the car parked across the street. He took out his phone to begin recording and hopefully get the license plate number, and he tried to slowly get closer to the car without being obvious. But the driver clearly saw him, because the car turned on, then quickly drove away. Jake's father tried to follow the car and get the plate number, but he couldn't. This was the last time the car was ever seen. The car had clearly been parked outside multiple times watching the house, even past dark at later hours in the night. The driver of the car, according to Jake, would always smile and wave at him any time they'd make eye contact with each other. And the last time Jake saw the car, the man inside started waving for him to come over, and even called out for him. Luckily, Jake was smart enough to go inside and tell his parents. It's not clear why the car would be outside even at night, considering the boy leaving the house alone at those hours would be extremely unlikely. Jake's parents brought the video to the police, but without a clear plate number, not much could be done. Jake's father went door to door asking each house on the block if they had cameras that caught the plate number, but he didn't have any good luck. The car never returned after this, but this happened relatively recently in November of 2021, so there's always a possibility that the man may return. The drawing you're about to see was done by a seven-year-old, and the picture itself is disturbing, but the backstory behind it is surprising. To start, the boy's father, Jeremy, sent the story and picture in. Jeremy has three sons. Jeremy's mother, Claire, sleeps over a lot to spend time with her grandkids. In Jeremy's words, his mother has always been on the stricter side, and that includes with her grandkids. 
but he says that's because she was raised in a stricter household. Jeremy's seven-year-old Tom is considered to be the troublemaker, who acts out against his parents and grandparents the most. So because of this, it often leads to his grandmother Claire scolding him. One day while Jeremy and his wife were out of the house and Claire was watching the kids, something happened between the two of them. Tom had hit his little brother for taking the last of the ice cream bars in the freezer, causing him to cry. This is commonplace behavior with Tom apparently, as he's very violent with his siblings as well. In response to Tom's behavior and hitting his little brother, his grandma Claire smacked him and forced him to stay in his room for the remainder of the day. Claire told her son that Tom was throwing a fit in his room, throwing things at the walls and on the floor in anger. Eventually he quieted down, and upon trying to leave his room, Claire once again had to get physical with him to get him to listen. It was likely during this time that Tom drew the picture you're about to see. When Jeremy and his wife returned home, they got an earful from Claire about Tom, very angry and distressed. Jeremy and his wife entered Tom's room angrily, ready to scold and punish him. When they opened the door, they were surprised to see Tom with a smile on his face looking up at his parents. Around him on the floor was his Crayola art supply backpack with various pictures on the floor, along with crayons and colored pencils laying everywhere on the floor. There was one drawing that stood out from the other crumpled up drawings, which Tom handed to his parents, and that was this. The drawing shows what appears to be Tom sawing off his grandma's head, as she already appears to be hanging. To add to the horrific scene, Tom as well as his parents are wearing smiles on their faces as Tom is doing what he's doing. And of course, if there was any shred of doubt as to who these figures were supposed to be, Tom labeled himself, his grandma, and his parents in the picture. Jeremy and his wife were disturbed after finding this picture, as it showed just how messed up their child may be mentally. Jeremy grounded Tom after finding this, but the couple did not show this drawing to Claire. Nothing good would come of showing her the horrific drawing her own grandson made. However, it didn't end there. The next day, when Tom was allowed out of his room to eat breakfast, he told his grandmother at the kitchen table that he hates her and that he's gonna kill her. Claire's reaction was one more of shock than anger. Jeremy once again sent Tom to his room. The way in which Tom said what he said was described to be with a hateful smile on his face, as if he were taking pleasure from saying it. Claire left to go home that day, and from the time Jeremy sent me this, she hasn't returned to the house. Tom's behavior has apparently always been on the more concerning, violent side, especially for a child his age. However, this drawing and behavior towards his grandmother convinced Jeremy and his wife to start bringing Tom to therapy. The first few meetings Tom refused to speak, but eventually started opening up more when his parents would leave the room. Their therapist says that Tom talks about wanting to hurt his brothers for the things they do, and hating his grandmother and second grade teacher. All I can assume they can do at this point is take it day by day with their son. This last one was a bit different in that the kid is a little older than the others, and some of the drawings were done on a computer. The child who drew the pictures you'll see shortly was 13 years old at the time. The drawings were found and submitted by his older brother Cody. The little brother's name was revealed in some of the images, but I'll blur them out and refer to him as John. John is described as a recluse by his brother, who gets picked on by some of his classmates. Though he found these pictures a year ago, he submitted them recently. Now the two boys are in high school, with Cody being a senior and John being a freshman. John and Cody share the same gym period, and Cody sees his little brother get slightly picked on in gym class whenever he's in earshot. Cody says that although he's tried to help his little brother break out of his shell, he's come to accept that the two of them are just different. John likes to go home after school and play computer games all day instead of doing his homework or hanging out with friends. This is exactly how he spends his weekends too. And while his brother and parents worry about him, they're not really sure what they can do to help him. His teachers are all concerned over his consistent lack of effort and poor grades, and they even go as far as to ask if everything is okay at home due to his extremely quiet nature. One day while John was out with his mom somewhere, Cody being curious about John decided to snoop through his notebook and see if his brother even took any notes in class. But instead of normal notes, there were just really weird doodles and drawings littering the pages. If there were ever any notes taken, they would be covered by stick figures apparently fighting or shooting each other with bow and arrows or guns. There were also apparently other unusual drawings, usually violent, all of which Cody took pictures of. Now being curious what John did on his laptop 24-7, Cody decided to take his laptop and sign into it after figuring out his password against his brother's knowledge. His desktop was packed to the max with game icons and folders. 
But the first place that Cody went to snoop was the pictures folder. And inside of there, he found multiple folders containing weird cartoons drawn on MS Paint by John. They were for a YouTube channel that John had made, in which he animated very simplistic graphic cartoons. But the most disturbing and eye-catching one was this one. It started with a picture of a school, then it cuts to inside a classroom, presumably John's classroom. The plot of this cartoon video is basically that John had been missing from school, and when his teacher asks the class where he's been, John suddenly arrives with a shotgun in hand and a combat helmet. This is where he threatens to kill all his classmates and then the teacher if he can't answer his questions correctly. The name Mr. Reynolds is used in one of the pictures, which was in fact one of John's actual school teacher's names, meaning John drew these pictures based on his own life. I know these are just stick figure pictures, but knowing how YouTube is with demonetizing or age limiting videos, I'm not going to show the rest of the pictures. But basically, John ends up shooting everybody in the room, and by the end of his video in the last drawing, John's character smiles and says, on to the next classroom. It may be a very disturbing hint into what's going on in John's head, and what may be going on in a lot of kids' heads in school who may keep to themselves or feel that they're being picked on. Cody never told his parents about the videos or pictures, but rather confronted his brother on them. Out of embarrassment most likely, John deleted his YouTube channel and got extremely angry at Cody, but he never ratted him out to his parents for going on his laptop, because he knew Cody saw some bad things on there. Cody had a talk with his brother, asking if he ever had thoughts of doing what his drawing did in his video, and he said absolutely not, it was just for YouTube views. A year has passed since then, and Cody says he's tried to help his little brother, who continues to act differently from his peers, and he contemplates going to his parents about the things he's found on John's laptop. In a situation like this, it would definitely be best to inform authority figures, as in this circumstance, given John already gets picked on and keeps to himself most of the time, the images he drew may be indicative of something he fantasizes about doing in real life.